G'day folks, on this beautiful autumn day, I'm going yabbying in this farm dam with really dirty, filthy coloured water. Hey you! You're watching Robbie Fishing. Now when I'm looking for a dam to go yabbying in, the first thing I like to see is really dirty water, and this dam takes the cake. Now I came yabbying in this dam a couple of years ago, and I caught quite a few really nice yabbies, and I caught a nice feed of yabbies. I haven't been back since. That was 18 months ago. That was the start of last season, and now we're getting towards the end of this season. The water was up near the high bank, then it's quite a bit lower now. Some dams go really well one year, then terrible the next, and some are just consistently good every year. Hopefully this is one of them dams. Anyway, I've got four open top lift nets baited with chicken drumsticks. Let's get the nets in. Net number one can just go out there. Because I love the look of this dirty water. Net number two, it's actually not that far from net number one. Net number three here can go out in the center of the dam. Look at all the bird poo and stuff along here. When I first got here, there was a massive big mob of wood ducks on the dam. Net number four can go up this end where all the algae seems to be uh, building up on the water. Well, all the nets are now in. Now, the farmer has asked me to tell you that this is private property. I've got permission to be here. And he's asked me just to let you know that if you do recognise this spot, you're not to come on here without permission. I'm very, very thankful to have permission to come on this private dam. Now, I said earlier that I like, uh, I like really dirty water, and this takes the cake. This is putrid. That doesn't mean it has to be dirty. I've certainly had some excellent yabbying adventures in really clear water. I do find the clear water, they are uh, the dam send to, to yabby the best at night time for some reason. I think they just feel safer at night time in clear water. But in the dirty dams, they tend to go well during the day. I've also seen down here some quite large yabby holes. Look at that fresh mud that's piled up under there. That's an excellent sign. Anyway, we'll wait a little while then come and check them. Like David Beckham. Folks, this is very much an impatient check. These nets have been in about 15 minutes. But I have caught yabbies in these style of nets in that time frame before. Look at this. There's yabbies in there, but they're not overly big. There's heaps. Two, three, four, five, six, seven yabbies. Oh, in 15 minutes, I've caught so many yabbies. They're not big, but they're big enough. It's getting late in the season, and I want to get a feed of yabbies. So, I'm going to keep them for now, and hope for bigger. I'm not going to keep them all, I'm just going to keep three or four of the biggest ones. Three, four. And I'll put these other three back. If I can upsize, I'll put them back as well, because I know they're not big yabbies. How'd you get? Come on. Wow! That's been in for about 15 minutes, and it's got seven yabbies in it. Can't complain about that. Right, I've got heightened anticipation now. Look at them all! Net's only been in 15 minutes! The net's only been in 15 minutes and look at all the yabbies! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven again! That's not a bad one. That's a uh, respectable yabby. Certainly not a monster, but it's uh... There's a couple of okay ones in here. Throw these smaller ones back. Jeez, they nearly got me. Ah, oh, got him, beauty. That's not the biggest yabby I've ever seen, but as it'll do. It's got no eggs. And these couple can go back. So the nets have only been in 15 minutes and I've caught 14 yabbies. Wow! I better put some water in my bouquet. I need a bit more than that. I haven't got my gumboots on so I can't get out any further. Don't look. Net number three. Oh no, the cord fell off. Shit, shit, shit. I haven't got my gumboots on. Oh, they all fell out. Oh, there's still one. There was quite a few in there. They all fell out. I've got a bloody waterlogged boot. Oh well. My little clip here. I've got these clips here to stop the cord from tangling when I, from twisting when I throw the net. The clip must have come undone. Oh well. So much duck poo along the edge of this dam. I haven't got me gumboots on. I've got me mongrels on. Me now waterlogged mongrels. Me right one is anyway. Oh, yeah, here we go. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the three that I was able to check without incident 
all had seven yabbies each. I reckon I'm gonna uh, achieve what I've set out to do here. I'm actually hoping to film a yabby catch and cook. I wanna, I wanna feed the yabbies, that's why I'm keeping a few. Well, the impatient check after this 15 minutes caught 21 yabbies, and that was only out of three nets because I had a malfunction with one of the nets. So there was seven, seven, and seven, and then the clip fell off the third net, so the yabbies all fell out. I don't know how many was in there, but if I was a betting man, I'd say there were seven. <laughs> Anyway, I've put some grass in with my yabbies here. I'll sit them in the shade, then wait a little while and come and check them again. Right, oh, it's round two. Time to check the nets again. They've had half an hour this time. would not seem to be in very deep. There wasn't a single yabby in that then. That was a bit weird. Maybe it was sitting on a rock or something. Considering there was seven in it in 15 minutes before, now nothing in half an hour. That's a bit disappointing. When I got out of my car then, there must have been 30 wood ducks lined up along the bank over there. I didn't even hear them come in. I'm only just parked. Probably 10 metres from the dam. And that was disappointing, not in the first net. What about this? Ugh, soft mud. What about the second net? There heaps in this one. What happened with the first net? What was the go there? Look at that. Heaps and some good ones. Beauty. I better get a pick. Righto, what have we got here? There's a nice one. Another nice one. I'll get a photo of him. Five. Six. I keep six. And throwing six back. So there was a dozen in that net. None in the first net and a dozen in the second net. I oh, made it yet. Down. You can get out too. Right. There was a dozen in that net, an even dozen. Now this is the net that had the malfunction before the clip came open. I've never had that happen before. I suppose if it's gonna happen, better to happen in this dam where it's quite shallow. Not as many in this one, but there's a couple of really nice ones. These are what I would call big yabbies, not huge yabbies, not monster yabbies, not record breaking, but they're still big yabbies. They're, they're, they're quite a good size. Well, three of them are anyway. This last one is, no, I'll throw them in. It's, it's medium to big. Now at the end of the algae net, I'll call this the algae net because this corner of the dam is where all the algae, the wind must be just blowing the the algae on the surface of the water all up this end. Gee, it's heavy. What on earth? I wonder why it's heavy. Have a look at that. It's only been in half an hour. <laughs> look at them all. You can physically feel the weight difference. One. Eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 19 yabbies in that net all up. 19. Some of the ones I'm throwing back are bigger than quite a few of the ones that I've kept. Right, I reckon I'll give them one more check and then I'm going to go and have a cook up because I've got quite a few here. I've got what I came for. Right, it's time for the final check. They've been in for nearly an hour this time, so I'm hoping there's quite a few in here. This net had nothing in it last time. Now leave the nets out now, then I'm going to go and do some cooking. Oh, there's some in there. Oh, one just flicked out near the hole. Oh, well, there's a few in there. I'll keep one. I don't need to keep many. I reckon I've got enough for what I want. Two. I'll keep two. And I'll throw seven back. All right. And I'll take the bait out and I'll fatten up the yabbies that are in there. In the dam. I'll throw them in the yard. Uh, this chicken into the dam to fatten the rest of the yabbies up. Right, net number two. This net's been going okay. Look at them all. Oh, there's yabbies on the outside, yabbies on the inside. I'm just going to throw all them back. Because I reckon I've already got enough. Oh, I'll chuck a couple of the bigger ones in. Look at them all stuck in the corner up there. Stuck in the corner with you. How'd you get? How'd you get? Shake it a baby now. See you later, mate. 
Net number three. This is the net that had about 20 in it before, I think. No, that was the one up the end that had most in it. This hadn't actually got all that many. It's got... Well, one just fell out. Got about eight or nine in it. I'll keep this one. He's got no claws. Yeah, look at that one. He's unarmed and still dangerous. All right. This is certainly a, uh, a numbers dam. Uh, yeah, it's more of a quantity dam, not a quality dam. But if we don't get any rain soon, I reckon next year it'll be a dry dam. Right, let's go check this last one. This is the one that had 20 or 21 or something in it before, whatever it was. I can't remember, but there was a lot. Righto, last net. Load me up. It's heavy, it's heavy. Oh, look at them all. They're certainly up here under the algae. Not as many as before. There's a black beetle in there. There was. A couple fell out, but there's still probably 12 or 15 or more in there. Have a good look around. I'll keep a couple of the biggest ones and pull all of them back, I think. That's a bigger one. This one's a bit bigger if I can get it out without losing a finger. Right, the rest can go back. In you get. If you're having trouble with your yabby net, the clip's coming undone. You've already caught about 100, but you still want some. Pick up the net, it's always wet. Check at any time. Dun, 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 dun. Dirty dam, done real good. Dirty dam, done real good. All right, I've come to a nearby table and chair here in the shade and I'm about to cook my yabbies now. I've got some hamburger rolls. I'm gonna cook the yabbies and make like yabby sandwiches, but in hamburger rolls. Yabby hamburgers, we'll call them that. I just hope that I brought enough water with me. I've got that and I've got that. I might have to make it a uh, a strong mix of the method of water because I wasn't planning on keeping as many as I did, but because they weren't overly big, I had to keep more than I'd normally keep. Over here, this is just my regular cooking. This is the container that I take for my catch and cook videos. It's got bits of everything in it, different stoves. It's got a it's got about four stoves hiding in there. There's me whisper light, me uh, shallowite burner. There's a gas burner in there. There's a butane. A, um, a body an Esbert stove hiding in there, there's some breadcrumbs and anyway, I should have everything I need. Let's start cooking. Right, first I'll load some water out of this drink bottle. I'll put it all in. That's a pretty fair amount. I'll leave this as a bit of backup so that I can top up my water as I go. I'm gonna put a heap of vinegar in there. You don't need that much, it's only because I haven't got more water. And I haven't got any real lemon, so I'm gonna add a heap of lemon juice. Real lemons are better. Real lemons are much better. But lemon juice will do. Don't, uh, if you haven't got real lemons, don't be scared just to use lemon juice. There's no half a cup of this, half a cup of that. You can put a heap of salt in there too is a good idea. I don't think I've actually got any salt. I've probably got a salt shaker, a salt grinder. But I don't think I've actually got any normal salt. Himalayan pink salt. I'll have to grind that in, but you probably won't see it because you're going to need two hands. Yeah. Salt, vinegar, lemon and water. Let's light it. I'm using my jet boil base camp stove here. Come on, that one. We want this one on. And away we go. I've actually filmed a review of this stove, it's an absolute ripper. It's expensive, the Jet Boil Base Camp, it's a very expensive stove, but it's very, very good. I absolutely love it. I even love right down to the lid with the holes in it, because when you forget your tongs, like I have now, I can use the lid as a strainer. I put the lid on now to help trap the heating and get the water boiling faster. And I'm gonna uh, take the grass out of my yabbies and just empty a bit of water out so that they're ready to go. Just taking all the grass out of the bucket. I wonder what would happen if you cooked the abbeys in that dirty water with all the algae on it. I wonder if it would be bad for your health. I reckon it would probably be okay. But I'm still not game enough to do it. 
Uh, these yabbies aren't huge. Most of them are about that size. Some are a bit bigger. Some are a little bit smaller, but they're certainly big enough. You can only cook what you catch. You can't cook big ones if you don't catch bigger ones. They will do. Not boiling yet, but we're getting warmer. The yabbies are ready to be loaded in. How's the water looking? Oh, well, it's starting to boil. I'll give it another minute or so to get it onto a rolling boil and then I'll throw some yabbies in. Now, I'm going to put the yabbies straight into the boiling water. The trick is to get the water right up to a raging boil, throw a few yabbies in, then put the lid on so that it stays boiling. You don't want the water to go off the boil. I know it's a bit of unpopular opinion with some people. They like you to do things differently, but this is the way I do it. I like to get the water boiling, then just throw them in a couple at a time and keep the water boiling. I tried doing it different ways over the years and being a bit of a people pleaser because I knew some people would whinge and what I found was that some people just whinged anyway, it didn't matter how I done it so I figured I'll just do it the way I've always done it and the way I was taught to do it, there we go get the water up to a raging boil if you don't want to see the yabbies go into the boiling water, turn away now how are they looking? look at that beautiful I actually got them all in Took me a while, but I've got them all in. Bit of behind the scenes stuff here. If I come over here, I've got this awesome chopping board that was made for me by Liam Sinclair with my logo on it and hey you. Liam sent this to my mail time back in, it was either October or November. I think it was November. It might have even been December. Either way, I can't remember, but I haven't used it because I haven't done any catching cooks over the summer. I've been waiting for it to cool down. I've got some hamburger rolls here. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a couple of the yabbies I'm going to sit them in the hamburger rolls, shells and all with their claws hanging out then close them up and take a photo and that'll be my thumbnail photo I might even put some around the outside and then I'll start shelling and uh, make a yabby sandwich with hamburger rolls Yabby burgers Right, I've just taken my thumbnail photo, now I've got to shell the yabbies What I'm going to do I'm going to shell them. All the shells will go back into the bucket that I cut the yabbies in. Because I'm in a public picnic ground, I don't want to leave these shells laying around where they'll stink. So I'll just uh, throw them all in there. But on the way home, I'll pull over somewhere away from houses and I'll throw them in a table drain. And the birds, the ants and everything will clean them up. Somewhere where the smell is not likely to offend people. That's not littering because it's just feeding the environment. I just don't think this public park is the spot to do that. So I'll shell them. I'm going to throw the meat in there. Then I'm going to get this water put it in there with the meat, give it all a real good wash and then we're ready to make our yabby burgers hopefully the camera's picking this up what I'm going to do, a couple of these have got some okay claws I'll throw them over there, but most of them they aren't really big yabbies so the claws aren't, uh, they're going to be a lot of work and not a lot of meat rip the tail off, twist it like that put the carapace in the bucket put the shell in the bucket what I like to do is pull the cap off the tail that goes in there the poo line goes in the bucket that goes in there. I'll do it again. Those, show, those claws aren't great, so pull that off like that. I normally pull the first, first and second, uh, I don't know what you call it, parts of the tail off, then it just comes out. Pull that cap off the, the pipe. Throw the actual pipe in the bin. Put the meat in, the, uh, in there. One more time. Thumb under the tail. Twist. Throw the carapace in the bucket. Take the first couple of lots of the tail off. I've got the meat out of the tail. Put the, the cap in there. The pipe in the bucket. And that in there. Doesn't matter if it's a little bit yucky because I'll be washing all that up before I use it. Right, let's get to work. Righto, there's all my yabby tails. I'll put some water in there. I'm going to put this lid on there. And I'm going to give them a big old shake up. I'll put the camera up on my head though. I don't know whether you'll see me do this or not, but I'll... Give it a good old shake. Pull the water out. Let's see what we're left with. The water's dirty. That's a good sign. That means that any of that guts and stuff that was on the meat is now in the water. Oops, one little bit of meat fell out then. Don't want too much of that to happen. 
They are looking good and lovely and clean. I don't know about you, but I reckon they look pretty bloody good to me. Right. Now the first thing I want to do is get rid of those two hamburger rolls. I'll leave them, <laughs> I'll throw them over on the grass over there for the birds because they've been out here for the last half an hour or more, uh, half an hour or more just drying out. I've been using them as props. I'll get some fresh ones. I'm gonna, some people will just rip them open, but I like to cut them open. When I rip things, it normally doesn't work very well. Stand up with a mess. Now the next step, I'm gonna spread some margarine on my bread. <laughs> That's too much. Now I know it is dying to tell me that butter is better, and you know what, I reckon it is too. But I've got margarine with me, so margarine it is. It's a bit soft, I didn't mean to grab that much. Oh well. Now if the yabbies were bigger, I'd try and mash them up a little bit, but because they're not overly big yabbies, I'm just going to sprinkle them on. Place them evenly on my bread. Now I'm just going to put a little bit of this Himalayan pink salt on it. Himalayan pink salt. I might just get a little bit of vinegar and sprinkle it on the top as well. I don't want too much vinegar. There's a reason for that. That's because yabbies are one of the nicest foods you will eat. And you don't want to wreck it by adding too much stuff to them. I reckon that's about as good as it gets. Now it's time for lunch. And that is the lunch of champions. Check this out. You can even see the yabbies hanging out the side. So good. I like this. Then I'll come back and tell you how good they were. Well, by the looks of it, I've got a fair old mess here that I need to clean up. Big shout out to Liam Sinclair for making me this awesome chopping board and sending it to my mail time late last year. Also, a big shout out to the farmer that kindly lets me on his property to go yabbying. It's a bit windy. If there's any wind noise, I apologise. But folks, I'm going to be honest, that was the best of the best. That I reckon that was the nicest lunch I've ever eaten. If I've eaten food nicer than that, I can't remember. That was just incredibly good. I kept it quite simple and it was just amazing. Give it a try. Thank you all very much for watching.